Hi there, it's Lisa from Bountiful Gardens. I'm here today in Bedminster, New Jersey. I am here doing an office building. I'm going inside to do three pots as you walk in the entrance. This is a beautiful building with beautiful woodwork and I'm gonna do three planters as you walk in with indoor plants and today my objective is to show you how these plants will warm up this space and with this fall weather and winter coming, I hope that you get that you can use plants to warm up your home and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it but I have to be quiet because there's work going on inside. All right, so I'm getting started with my first planter. These plants we have here, um, the planter is pretty awesome. It's really old looking with this finish. It's like a big heavy duty concrete planter. I've just got done finishing, filling it up with um, some really good uh, potting mix. I like to use potting mix. It has vermiculite and everything in it. I actually used one by miracle Grow that I happen to like. So I'm digging a little bit of the hole out right now. This is gonna be my centerpiece. Um, this is called a colocasia, and it is a really uh, dramatic plant with its huge leaves. And it's going to do really great here with all this bright light. So I'm going to, a lot of times, struggle with getting these pots off. But I just keep loosening it up. If it didn't come off, I would take a knife and just cut it down the side. But it's coming off just fine. I'm going to choose which side I want to be visible the most from the staircase. So I think I like it this direction. And so I'll dig it out a little bit. And once I feel like it's nice and straight and steady, I'll start packing down the dirt around it. So this is my dramatic focal point. This is a very low maintenance plant that is brings a lot of uh, a lot of interest to this spot once it's going to be done. So there. I'm ready to fill in plants around it. I love big planters because you can do such a cool arrangement when I have to work with a small planter. I don't get as much stuff to work with, which isn't as much fun. So let me go get the rest of my plants. So this plant is a type of ginger. I'm picking this because of the pretty variegation in the leaves. Brings a little color, low maintenance, a lot of gold to it. And I like the way it's growing outwards. So I have my tall plant coming up and then this is gonna give me the dramatic leaf I need to go outwards to the edge of the pot. So now I've got this around here, I'm noticing that I need a lot more soil. It's a little root bound, but that's okay because I'll tease the roots out, you know, and then they'll, once they're teased out, they'll start to take hold. Okay. And then I'm just going to do these guys, like I always group things in threes, odd numbers are the best, always, when you're doing a planter or in a landscape design, always do three or five, so it's almost, I consider this almost like the points of a triangle is where I would put the three plants so that it's pretty evenly spaced out. I've got my last one here. 
which is really root bound. So I'm gonna just tug at the roots. It's okay if I break a little off, it'll regrow back because that's gonna be hard to get through. This one's gonna be the tough gut. Not, not so bad. move my soil around so these guys firm up. I'm still going to need more soil. This is a gargantuan pot so it's taking up a lot more soil than I thought. Good thing I brought extra. I'll be right back. So now let me shuffle my dirt around, pack these babies in and get ready for my next set of three coming which will go in between these guys. And of course, I'm gonna use a contrasting texture to make this look really nice. And I will show you what that will be in one second. So my next texture is this fern. This is called a foxtail fern, and it is one of my favorites. They always remind me of dreadlocks, aren't they? Totally cool. So this plant mixed in between holds your interest. So people that think green is boring, it's only boring, I guess, if you use all the same leaf shapes. But once you start introducing all these different textures, it just creates so much interest for the eye. And this pot is gonna give me a lot of trouble. Look at that. There's no way I can get this out without breaking these guys off. Be impossible, he'll be fine little bulbs. There we go. I don't think I have my pruners with me or else I'd have cut the pot. I'm going to tease him out so he gets started. Look at all those bulbs. Very cool. Now what kind of gardener would I be if I didn't have a pair of these guys with me? So when all else fails, this is what you do. That's much easier. And I'm gonna loosen it up again, see? Wow, he's root bound. So now he will set his roots more easily in this dirt instead of keep wrapping around and around and around. And I just make sure I'm setting him in a way that his plant is facing the person who's viewing him. A little casualty piece here. Be plenty more where that came from. And my last one over here. I'm just gonna cut this guy because I'm sick of struggling with the pot. Already know the challenge I'm in for. Much easier. with it a little bit. Make sure everything's standing up the way I want it to. Not every angle is very important to me. And I think the design is done. I want to make sure this guy has plenty of space to make more, more branches so I don't want to pack everything too tight because he will grow. And of course I always like to plant for tomorrow, meaning the future, and so that nothing will become overgrown and I love it. I actually want to turn them a little bit. That's it. I think he just needed a minor adjustment. Perfect. 
Okay, so I had to take a brief intermission. I ran out of soil. I have now, I'm back with more soil and I made a couple additions to this planter. So I decided it needed some trailing something. Even though I love this beautiful pot and I don't want to hide it, I added the ivy so I would have something visually going down. So I'm putting my finishing touches. I've put three ivy, so I have three of everything in a triangle shape. So it's one, two, three. And this is the same thing, one, two, three, and then the ivy, one, two, three. And that's how you plant a mixed container so that it evenly fills in. So now I'm just doing my final touch of adding the rest of this soil and I have to um, shine the leaves, which um, I will show you the difference. If you can see how I took a damp cloth and you can use something organic like neem oil and clean off the leaves. I left one not done so that you could see the difference. Do you see the vibrancy and these two plants that I already cleaned off all the leaves and this one, how like the dirt and, and dust and just like the water had minerals in it. So um, I definitely recommend doing that with all your indoor plants, maybe like once every two weeks or once a month. You, If something's smaller, you can actually take it and bring it into your bathtub and shower it down. It's much faster. Or you can just take a damp cloth and rub it the leaves and clean them. But if you don't have that dust on the leaf, the actual light gets to the leaf better and it's healthier and the dust invites insects and mites and different things. And um, the glossiness just is really pretty. So I'm gonna finish cleaning off my last leaf. I'm gonna finish putting in the soil and then we're gonna get on to the next pot. Alright, so now we're on our next pot. The design for this was definitely color. So, of course, I'm still indoors, so um, it is hard to get a lot of flowers indoors with the lighting situation. So, I wanted to get my color through leaf um, color. So, I'm taking different types of cordyline, and so I have the burgundy with this variegated that has a lot of burgundy and pink, and then it has also the lime green tones. So, I'm going to be mixing all these different color leaves. Um, that are kind of the same monochromatic color range and mixing them with the greens, still bringing in texture. And I find this um, design you're gonna love. So basically I'm taking the cordylines and then I'm gonna bring in these maidenhair ferns which are really soft and fluffy. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna repeat them throughout and then I'm gonna bring in another leaf color. So, um, so this design is gonna be really pretty. So. Here goes. I got it started and I have to keep adding more soil because it looks like I'm still a little low for my next pots. So I'm always careful about the way I repeat it. So basically if this guy is to the left of this one, then I have to make sure he's also to the left of this one. So I am going to have to put him to this side so that I can get another one of these guys. So everything is repeating in the same order. And it hides, I like this because it hides the stalkiness of this plant behind. So now you have that leaf and it just brings the leaves going up in many different directions. So 
And now it's always about tucking and feeling for what needs more dirt. So I needed some ivy. I showed you in the last planner that um, I wanted something trailing. And so I didn't have anything in a four inch or a six inch pot that was long enough strands for what I wanted to do with such a large pot. So I actually got a hanging basket because that will have the longest pieces. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm now that it's out of the basket, I can easily get an ivy plant like this separated. And you can do this with a lot of hanging baskets. Some hanging baskets, you might even have to cut it like you would cut a cake or a pie with a knife. But I can kind of feel where the plants separate. And so I just gently tug and it's gonna become three plants for me that are nice and long and it's got root system intact. So let me bring my three new plants into the container. So I just took the two of those together like this to make it really full. And I'm just, the back of this planter, since it's not gonna be seen, I'm not gonna waste any ivy back there. But you can see it from the steps. So I will fill in on this side, but by the wall, it would just be a waste and hard to actually get back there to water that one little plant tucked back there. And so now I have to backfill with soil, but my planter's done, it's colorful, it's got tons of texture, and I'm pretty excited about it. So as I was looking through my planner to make sure everything is where I wanted it, I actually saw a few leaves that I'm not really digging, so I will, it's really easy to cut them off just like this. So don't be afraid to cut these leaves right off at the base, and it will grow a new one right back. So I will get rid of a few of these guys have a little bit of tears in them. Not a big deal. A new one will come right back and replace it. So don't be afraid to get rid of any leaves that have any minor imperfections due to the weather or if they got dry ones or whatever. It'll grow a new one right behind it. Voila. All right, so we're on our last pot. Um, this guy is a little smaller, a little more manageable, won't need as many plants um, because the other two pots were really huge. I picked really like fat outward designs. Now that we're in a tighter area, there's a walkway that people need to walk by. Um, there's a wall here. It just, um, I believe it needs a slender plant. So I picked a tree that I thought would be really nice for this and that would uh, focus on its design. So there's a couple of things I want to tell you about this tree. It's really pretty ficus. It's got the braided roots. It's got beautiful rubbery foliage that's really nice. And so um, a lot of people might think, he's crooked, I can't use it. Um, what you do a lot of times in a nursery, there'll be a tree that you would even plant in your yard and it may not be straight in the pot. Maybe it started out um, when they planted it in that pot, it was not perfectly straight. That doesn't mean that you can't have it straight in your new pot. So all you do is, I'm gonna take it out of this pot and I will put it in the pot straight. So basically, if you see in this pot, look in here, I have it on an angle. I don't have it necessarily straight, but all I did was line up the tree so it would be straight. And when I pack the dirt, I will pack it around the tree so that he continues to now grow straight up. So um, can you see that, how nice and straight he is now that I have him planted on an angle in the pot and he will forever be straight now that he was planted straight. And I'm gonna fill in these bird's nest spruce because they're very cool. It's not a bird's nest spruce, it's a bird's nest fern. There are such thing as bird's nest spruce, but I'm gonna plant him down a little lower and fill in around it.
So I, I picked this um, fig because it was braided and I did want to be able to see its trunk. I feel like it, sh it shows a lot of interest. And so basically I'm using this um, fern. I like to use plants so that you don't see the soil. So um, a lot of people may not do mixed combinations in their indoor plants or don't think of doing combinations. But to me, I would rather see this greenery at the bottom than seeing like this tree with a pile of dirt around it and then have to always look at that muddy dirt. So that's what my design is based off of. And the fact that I just absolutely love these curly leaves make this design really interesting. You can have a lot of fun with indoor plants. You can really make some really cool, interesting designs. I used to think indoor plants were boring. And you know there's no such thing as an indoor plant. Basically, indoor plants are an outdoor plant somewhere, but it's a tropical area. So I always thought indoor plants when I was younger were they're boring, they're all green. And then when I started getting into all the textures, it started making them really much more fun and exciting. And I love to see what they do for an indoor space. Besides all the health factors, indoor plants are wonderful for. So um, anyway, this is my last plant and um, I'm gonna finish up here. I'm gonna clean up and show you the after. So hopefully you can really take um, this whole lesson of what greenery can do for your indoor space and come on out to Bountiful Gardens and pick out some indoor plants to make your place more beautiful. All right, all the hard work's done, all the planners are filled. I'm actually gonna take a break now, sit here and enjoy the work and the beautiful design that I've done. And I hope you guys like it and I will bring you back one day as it grows to show you how beautiful it looks as it fills in.